What is going on Minecraft Java Edition players that play Minecraft Java Edition with their Asus Rogue Ally or any other PC handheld or controller? Today I'm going to show you guys how to set up shaders with fabric the best way I know how. So let's first jump out of this game and save and quit and then we are going to navigate back to Modrinth. Now if you haven't followed my first video which shows you how to set up a controller then definitely go do so now. I also have other videos in this playlist series for fabric only. If you came here for forge mods then go check out my forge playlist also linked in the description below and also linked on the channel. So right now I have set up some other mods in my recent video that allow us just to use just specific mods like collective and uh, dynamic lights and mod menu of course if you don't have the mod menu definitely go do so go get that now tree harvester to chop down trees and vein miner to chop down some veins of mining uh, ores and stuff and such okay anyways let's go click on install content and the very first thing we really need for shaders to work is sodium okay sodium is really recommended and highly needed for this to work the other thing you need is iris shaders so you need this installation file for iris shaders and that is about it now this isn't a video about sodium or how performance sodium is at all okay so people are like oh no you need entity calling and ferrite core and lithium and blah 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 well no this isn't a video for that this is just for shaders the next thing you're going to do is click on this little tab on the top right of your page where it says mods resource packs and data packs okay that is where the shaders are now we can install some complementary shaders bsl shaders we can install any shader that is compatible with 1.2 1.5 now, some shaders actually still work with 1.2, 1.5, and they might not show up here because the developer hasn't updated them or doesn't care to do so. So, how do we access those? So, the thing that we can do here is basically change our actual instance on the right hand side. Um, see right here where it says, or the left hand side, sorry, where it says relevance. This is locked to that actual installation, okay? Now, what you're gonna do is go to install content. You're gonna go click on game version on the top right hand side and click on unlock filter. Now you can select which versions you want to be able to see and I'm just gonna leave it at default. The reason why is because I've noticed that shaders usually work cross platform and the only reason why they wouldn't work is some graphics might not show properly. So I'm gonna go to shaders and now I can scroll through and actually change the actual what shader is actually showing up. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you here, guys, is that this instance is not letting me select anything that is for <laughs> the actual version unless I actually select it. As you can see here, it's locked to 1.2, 1.5 still. So that's why I showed you where that is. But as you can see here, now that I've selected 1.2, 1.3, Insanity Shader is going to show up and that one is for 1.2, 1.3. Now, what if I, you know, go to 1.2, 1.4? As you can see here, Insanity Shader doesn't show up. Now, it's unlocked anyways because we went and unlocked it and that Insanity Shader is going to show up. And that's the one I wanted to download and that's why I said that. Now, it's going to give you a warning saying, hey, this is only compatible with 1.710 and above but whatever install it anyways now the good thing about modrinth is it actually picks what uh, version of the shader it's actually going to be installed as well now the other thing is maybe you have a friend that developed a shader for you what if you wanted to install a shader side loading it click on the three dots beside the gear icon on the top right hand side click on open folder and now you can access your folders i showed you how to access this in the mods video and then inside of the shader packs folder you'll see these shaders right here which is really freaking cool right so that is why i'm showing you that is just in case you have like a shader pack that maybe somebody's unreleased and they want you to test it out or something you can actually just copy and paste that zip file which don't unzip it just leave it zipped inside of here now exit it out and click on play now of course make sure that shader is compatible with iris which is something that is helping with that shader to be able to be used with your device now i'm using the asus rogue ally x again for this because i think the asus rogue ally x is pretty performant and i'm sure you probably came here for that as well now if you're using another pc handheld like the legion go it's kind of the same concept but that is all you really need to know 
Now, the next thing you're gonna do is click on options. You're gonna go to video settings and you're gonna see a new menu in here. This is gonna be different to what you might be used to if you haven't used Sodium before. Now, this menu allows you to change things like your max shadow distance and all that kind of stuff, but I'm not gonna go there. I'm just gonna leave it the way it is because we're gonna have a video specifically for Sodium only so I can just kind of guide you guys how to get a little bit better performance with even your good device like the Asus ROG Ally X. Now click on the shader pack settings up here and click on the shader pack that you want to actually use. Click on shader pack settings on the bottom right hand side and now you can actually configure certain settings in here. Now this device should be able to handle high but I'm just gonna change this so you can see that you can change this to like low, medium, high, ultra, and minimum, okay? So some devices you can change um, not some devices, most shader packs, you can actually change the profile. And this basically is just a profile that the developer has set up. So it shows you what exactly is changing down here as well. So where it says profile with that big black text box on the bottom, no shadows, no extra effects. Low is low shadows, no extra effects. Low, medium shadows and ambient oculation, medium shadows and so on and so forth. So if you find that, you know, using high is too much, which I'm gonna start it off with high because I think this device can handle it, then you can just lower it down. I'm gonna change this to classic because that's for the clouds. I don't like the, uh, the realistic clouds. And now I'm gonna click apply. Now this saves as an actual file inside of that folder. Now you could share this with your friends. Say you change some other stuff in here inside the lighting and all that kind of stuff. You could share this with your friend and say, hey, this is the best optimized, you know, settings for BSL shader for my Asus Rogue Ally X. So it should work for you. So go to your shader pack list, go to your open shader pack folder. And as you can see here, there is an option, which is this text document right here. Whoops, my bad. Let's zoom back out. There it is right there. So see this BSL underscore V10 dot zero dot zip file. That is actually the shader packs text document so that you can basically share that with your friend if you want them to be able to use it. So what they would do is just paste this inside of here and make sure it matches the version of that BSL shader name. Okay, now that's all said and done. Let's go back into Minecraft Java Edition and we can change things for these other shaders as well. So I'm gonna leave this at high as well. I'm gonna change this to Unbound and Basic RP Support. And that's just because I know what that does. Now you could Google things, basically check out what things do. Uh, balanced, I'm gonna leave that as well. I know Balance works out pretty good on this device as well. Um, and again, if you don't change anything, it's not actually going to save any configurations. As you saw there, I didn't change anything within that Insanity shader, so it didn't change anything. So click done, done again. And of course, if you wanna change your render distance to help with you know, boosting the performance of that shader as well, as the shaders do actually render really hard on your device. They're not gonna damage your device, but they do render pretty hard on your device. But you're definitely gonna see a huge difference when we actually jump into the world. Again, hit that subscribe button if you wanna you know, follow the channel, if you want to see so much more about this. I'm gonna do some more gameplay footage about Minecraft Java Edition on my Windows PC handhelds as well. But as you can see here, you're getting some pretty stable performance and well i am and we're using the highest setting and well i think it's the balance setting for this one so yeah balance setting for this shader now i can feel a little bit of stutter and everything on the screen and that could be just because i have you know other mods and stuff like that installed as well and what you can do to get a little bit better performance is basically lower your render distance you can also check out um your actual your actual FPS and stuff like that as well. So you could see your FPS on screen and stuff too, but that's going to be for our sodium video, which is gonna be kind of a combination of sodium and shader packs as well. But if I wanted to change to BSL shader, click apply, then I can definitely see what kind of performance this device can actually handle when it's set to high. So I'm jumping into BSL now and I'm playing this at 12 render distance and I don't feel any stutters like that other mod that other shader pack okay there's a little bit of a slowdown i can feel right there 
and you'll be able to feel it yourself and that's where i was saying that you can actually go into your settings of that shader and change it while you're actually in game and it doesn't you know affect anything major but you can change this all the way down to like low to medium if you want to to actually be able to see what kind of performance that's going to give you so double click on that apply and i can feel already that this is going to change it does make it look a little bit different obviously but you're definitely getting a better performance when you do lower it just a bit and you can change other configurations in the settings as well and basically you could just you know hit that google option and just check out what other people have suggested to get a little bit better performance and obviously changing things inside of your sodium settings does help as well it's getting dark out now guys though i should probably uh go hind find myself a cave or a hole to bury myself in because i don't have any actual stuff because this world is just kind of my tester world so have a nice day hope that was helpful to get you installed with shaders on your asus rogue ally in 2025. Bye.